What is happening, guys? Welcome back. So, yet again, another video on the Mark 1 Golf. And first off, apologies for no video for a week or two. Um, yeah, managed to do my backing. Um, if you've not seen already, myself and my wife have purchased a new house or a new to us house. It was a hell of a lot worse than when we viewed it months ago. Um, and yeah, we're doing that up. And my body isn't used to doing all that anymore. I've not done it for years. So, yeah all the digging and moving and things, put my back out. Um, but thankfully, after some very magical hands being on it, it's all sorted and we are back in the workshop. So what we are going to be doing in this one, well, the first thing we're going to be doing in this one, is we're going to be putting a rear disc conversion on the car. So the car originally had drum brakes on the rear and now that we're throwing a little bit more power under the bonnet, I figured it'd probably be a good idea to upgrade from drum to disc on the rear. Now this is a complete conversion kit from Heritage Parts Centre who, if you're not already aware of, are working with me on the channel and are sponsoring this build. So get yourselves over there for any classic Volkswagen and Porsche parts. Use the code CHAMBERS to get yourself a nice little 10% off your order as well. But we're going to be using this kit, which as far as I'm aware, uses Mark IV Golf rear calipers. Um, and discs and a uh, new stub shaft and I don't really know. They're all different parts. We've fitted one side, so we're gonna go through and fit this side. Now, something that I'm gonna be fitting to this car that you might not fit to yours is this here, which is um, basically a drop plate for the rear axle. So normally the stub axle would bolt somewhere on there directly onto the hub or onto the rear arm, sorry. But what we're going to be doing is using this rear location plate, drop plate, which, which you bolt on to the rear beam and it lifts the centre of the um, stub axle, so the centre of the wheel, up by around 80 mil, which makes, means that if you were running standard suspension, suspension your car would be 80 mil lower from standard. Um, but what in our case it means with coilovers and eventually air ride, it means that um, we'll be able to run this further up, meaning that we should get better damping and things and we're not running on the bottom of the shock, etc. And it keeps the... Uh, the um, my head's gone. You can tell I've not done this for a while, can't you? Uh, it keeps the rear beam away from all the chassis legs and everything. So that's why we're going to be fitting them. So I'm going to chuck the GoPro on. And we'll make a start and I'll try and talk you about three the bits I've done when I've done them. So first part we're going to chuck on is this drop plate on the rear using some 25 mil bolts that I have thread locked as well. So we'll put, put these in to do them up. Next one is stub axle and the brake back in plate. Stub axle goes through. Again, lock tight on the threads. This one goes, how does this guy? Can't remember how this one goes. Here at this point then. So we've got the drop plate bolted on to the rear axle. We've then got the stub axle and brake backing plate bolted on to the drop plate. And then I've just knocked this that comes in the kit on here, which is some sort of a dust cover, I think, to stop anything getting in anywhere near the bearing, although the bearing does have a seal on the back of it. So the next thing we want to do is get the bearings in here, the races pressed into this, which as you can see, I've got a bit of paint in it. We've painted this so, so it doesn't rust. So we need to clean a bit of that up because I didn't mask it off. But let's go over to the press and get these fitted. I don't think that was recording for that whole bit. Now we've got the bearing races in there and there. We're going to pack, we'll pack in the bearing. So basically, we get some grease here. I'm using. LM2 grease, um, you get your bearing in your hand, you've got your grease there, and you basically 
push the bearing in and you start seeing the grease coming inside if you can just about see that you just keep pushing the bearing round like that and just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it packing the bearing so that there's grease absolutely everywhere and it's not going to run dry it's very messy take your time make sure that you get it everywhere that it needs to be so you don't have a wheel bearing go straight away Once we've got them all packed, this bearing goes in the back side. Increase that as well. That comes in here, there, like that. And there's a little dust cover. It just presses on in there as well. Remember, when we've done this, we need to clean this disc down to get all this grease off so we don't go contaminating the pads. But let's take this over to the car. Put the front one in, get it mounted. So I've just quickly wiped the back of the disc over um, to get any grease off. Now we've got the bearing and the seal on the back, front bearing is in. That will push home like that. Wash up and nut on here. And then there isn't really a torque setting for it. So I've just done that up and it's a little bit too much. So back it off a bit, nip it up basically. There's a bit of resistance there. The wash up won't move. I think that's about right. If you go over tightening it, you'll do damage apparently, but we've done it up. Hopefully it'll be all right. You've got a little castellated nut that goes on, split pin, through it also it can't come off. Then there is a cap to go on at the end as well, but I'm gonna leave it off this side just because I wanna be able to double check everything. Next thing to bolt on is the caliper carrier, which new bolts come in the kit. Then we chuck the pads in, a little bit of copper slip where they're gonna wanna run on the carrier. Caliper goes on, bolts in place. And there are the brakes all fitted to the car. Which is a little bit of paint me to clean back, but they're on. We've sprayed all the calipers and carriers black just to make them look a bit nicer and painted this bit here so that it doesn't go rusting. Um, still need to put the cap on, but we'll worry about that a little later on. That's those all on with the drop plates. <laughs> Quick little edit. As I was sat editing this video, I spotted that I put the calipers on the wrong sides because the bleed numbers were at the bottom. I've now just been in and changed. So calipers are on the correct side before anyone goes commenting. I have gone in now and wound the coilover up because the guy that had this these coilovers before didn't run these drop plates so essentially putting those on we're going to be 80 mil lower than he was pretty low on those so i've just raised those coils the coilovers up ever so slightly um we took it on its wheels and there it is first time sat on its wheels since we've painted it and it looks absolutely sick they may only be replica bbs wheels but the grand scheme I think it looks pretty good. So the week hasn't really panned out how I wanted it to with the whole back and everything. I've not really been in here much and I've been trying to do light duties because if I did my back in again, the wife would murder me. Um, and I'm still waiting for loads of stuff to turn up. I ordered a loads of stuff on Monday when I was laid up um, and it's now Friday and not a lot of it's turned up. So yeah, we're still waiting for a fair amount of stuff to turn up 
let me just show you for a couple of little bits I have done now. So obviously got the rear brake conversion on, you've already seen that lot. I've now got the gear shift sort of mounted in. We've got one there, one there, and one there as fixings. I've modified the linkage. So here at the back and here at the front, there's a little bit of aluminium that's on the actual selector housing, if you like. I've just cut them off flush with the piece underneath. Um, made a couple of little or three little spaces. I think they're about 20 mil, I can't exactly remember. Um, drill and tap, drill and tap, drill and tap through the floor and into, or well, the tunnel into the housing and bolted that down. Coming in here, we've then got all the mechanism on. Now this has obviously got to come off and be painted, but I just wanted to put it on to check the length of the cables, the gear cables, and they don't look too bad, to be honest. Um, I'm going to change the routing of them, I think, um, but it doesn't look too bad. I'm pretty happy with it. We've got one drive shaft on, which is, I need to put some clips on this, but it's on. Um, the other one, the end was wrong. So I've got to get another one. Oh, I'm missing some spaces as well. So I've got to try and sort them out. And then the wiring, I have started trying to have a look at the wiring, but I'm really pretty lost with it all. Um, I've gone through today and extended the wires for um, the headlight indicator and side lights this side. Um, and the same on that side. We've just got them extended and moved. All of this, like in the engine bay, I really, I don't know. I am no auto electrician, but I've got a mate coming over next week who knows what he's talking about, who is going to come over and help me and get all of the wiring up, buttoned up and finished. I've gone through on the inside of the car and uh, taken all the plastic sheathing off of the main loom and removed a couple of bits for like the rear washer and things and that we didn't need because we're not using it. Um, the cables here were damaged for the pump, fuel pump, so I've uh, sorted those out as well. Um, and then coming around here, we've just plugged the uh, rear lights in, but I've got these still to sort out because they had scotch blocks all on them um, for who knows what. So I've got to sort those out. And then I've got the cradle for the new battery, which is um, an Odyssey battery, which I'm not 100% sure where we're going to be putting that. I boarded it because it's nice and small and should be able to hide it quite easily. I, I was going to put it in the boot, but now I'm thinking of putting it on Air Rider. I want to do an install in the boot, so I don't want to see it. But I was going to do the install in the wheel well, but now I'm thinking I might do an install so you can see it. I don't know. There's too many variables. I've also got here the track slag exhaust, um, full exhaust. So it's the downpipe from the back of the turbo all the way to the back of the car. That we've got to fit but i don't want to go putting that on until we know what all the pump or the wire the lines and everything for the fuel tank are all in and sorted um so yeah not a massive amount like i say i'm still waiting for loads and loads of stuff so it might not be the video you were expecting it certainly wasn't the video i was expecting to be making hopefully next week we're going to make some more progress and we can get this wiring situation sorted out get some power to it and start seeing if things work. I can't see it running for another few weeks, but yeah, if we can get wiring sorted out and know that things are going to work, that will be a big step. So hopefully you've enjoyed it, guys. Until next time, enjoy.